Hi, it's Modi, and welcome to my Passover program show without the program. This year, I was supposed to perform in Arizona, in Florida, two shows in Mexico, and it didn't happen. My Passover tour was canceled, Passover programs were canceled, and it hit us like a ton of bricks. Oh my God, first we were in denial, it was a whole denial stage. No, how could they cancel Passover programs? What? God would never want such a thing. No, 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 no. And then we figured, oh, they're going to cancel. You know what? I'll do it by my mother. I'll go to my mother's house. She'll make it. She'll love having the kids. Then we found out going to your mother's house will kill your mother. So we came to the realization we are doing Passover at home. And as hard as you think it was for you, imagine your housekeeper. The day you told her we're not leaving for Pesach. She's like, what do you mean? That's that one week I look forward to. The week when you get the hell out of the house. I have the whole house to myself. That's the week I, I sleep in your bed. I drive your car. I wear your clothes. You're going to stay here? Oh my God. Yes, Esperanza. Estamos staying with you. We're going to be here. And we have to do Passover cleaning. What does that mean? We have to clean all the surfaces. She's like, I do that all year round anyway. What do we mean Passover cleaning? I'm, well, that's it. This year, Estamos staying in La Casa con usted. That's the formal of you, usted, even though said completely condescending. Those of you who don't know what a Passover program is, the only way to describe it is, imagine Disney came and hijacked Passover, made a theme park out of it. Yes, we all go to these exclusive, expensive, expensive resorts like the, the Ritz and the Fairmont. And we, of course, give it different names. We give the programs names like the Caribbean Passover. These are Jews. These aren't pirates. Who's catering the event? Jack Sparrow? Caribbean Passover. Then you have names that try to make it fancy. You know, it's, it's a fancy. It's upscale Passover getaway. Yes, it's very upscale when the father sends the kids 6 a.m. to put their t-shirts and flip-flops and sunglasses on every chair so when no one else has a seat by the pool. One of my favorites is the royal Passover. This is, I mean, yes, the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh show up to watch Jews eat at a buffet. Yes, that, that's very royal. There's nothing royal about it. It's a Passover program. Not everyone can travel to a Passover program. Jews in New York, for example, who can't travel to the program because they have a pregnant daughter-in-law who's in her 11th month or some grandfather decided to ruin Passover by living an extra year, they have to go to a program that's upstate. And by upstate, I mean Westchester. But for everybody else, the fun and the experience begins right in the airport. You see everybody that you know. Where are you going? Arizona. We're going to Florida. Yeah. Oh, California. Wow. She's going to California. It's far. Okay, but you'll have a good time. I heard about that program. It's going to be really nice. Yeah, 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 yeah. They all get on the airplane. And as soon as that door closes and they announce the door is now closed, you start to hear Packages being opened, tinfoil unwrapped, bags coming out for Koshamar, Kosherville, Kosher this, pomegranate, pomodura, pama pa pa pa. And food, just food being consumed, consumed. They start to eat, and of course, it's only two hours you can eat until bread can't be eaten, so there's donuts being passed out everywhere. And the stewardesses are looking at them like, really, you couldn't wait 15 minutes till we were in the air? No, put the tray, put the tray back up. They're literally sitting there eating like they were Katrina victims. Now you get to the hotel, and of course, nobody is happy with their hotel room. No one's ever happy. You have 800 Jews in the lobby screaming, Manager! Manager! And they all have one line they hit the manager with. Do you know how much I'm paying for this week? Do you have any idea how much we're paying for this week? And keep in mind, no one's paying. No one. Every family of 40 or 60 people has one grandfather, one Zadie, that came over to America after the war with 13 cents in his pocket, bought every building standing in Manhattan, made billions and millions and billions of dollars. He's flipping the bill for everybody. 
He himself is in a small room lobby level, thrilled. Oh, there's no stairs to get downstairs. He couldn't be happier. But all the Yerushim, all the people, the, all of his inheritors are upstairs screaming, why is my room facing the golf course? I want to face the pool. Why is this facing that? Two terraces, I want them combined. The nanny's room. Why is the nanny's room not next to the kids? I don't want to ever hear these kids for the next eight days. And this, of course, is what Passover is all about. The first night, this is Seder night. Now, this is the night everybody comes down for pits. They are dressed to the nines. They are hitting you with their biggest outfit. This is it. This is, this is also the only night the men can fit into their suits. For from now on, the men come down in Lululemon for their Lulu love hammers. But the women are in Bergdorf and Van Cleef. And, and anybody that has a daughter that they need to marry off, they parade her for her first showing. It's like the Westminster dog show. Here she is. Yes, she, she went to seminary. Yes, she's valedictorian of her school. She graduated with honors, magna cum caca. But no one cares about that. Only thing they care, she's thin. I have a thin daughter looking to get married. 90 copies of her shidduch resume. They have her parading around in nine inch heels. She's wobbling around like a baby giraffe. They got to get this girl married because they can't afford to come back to this program next year. Now, Seder night. Now you have your Seder. Now, if you don't have a private room, you're nobody. If you tell people, we had our Seder in the dining room, they look at you like you have leprosy. Everybody else is talking about, I have a private room. I have a private, have a, I have a private room too. Where, where was your private room? In the men's locker room, between the shower and the schwitz. They sat us down there. We used the toilet seats. It was amazing. Where's your private room? Under the stairs. You know where you come down and you go into the dining room or to the pool? Under the stairs, they hung up some beach towels. We had our own private room. Yes, the private room. This is very, very important. This, of course, is the Seder night. The best part about being at a Passover program, you never have to go to synagogue. You never have to go to any of the services. There's 800 people staying at the program. There's never more than 20 at the services. Only people at the, at the synagogue or the services are, is the rabbi who's hired to be there. All the guys who are the gabbais in their own town, they lead the service. They love that power. They love, yeah, yeah, yeah. They love people coming to them at, the, at their table during dinner. I need an aliyah tomorrow. It's my mother-in-law's brother's yard site. Yeah, see me in the morning. I'll just remind me. Don't forget to remind me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you have the kids who went to Israel to do their year and came back. Instead of completely irreligious, they came back too religious and so annoying. They're walking around with their big black hat, the sombrero, a wool suit. You're in Florida. You're in Arizona. These kids are with wool and a white shirt and a tie and tzitzis. And, and the rest of the program sitting at the pool, half naked like the Corbin Pesach. He's walking around with a Gemara. In case someone wants to know, Rab Hanina said in the name of... Is it, I'm like, and no one goes to the services. There's people who are at the program until the fifth day. They're like, what's that? That's the shul? That's the synagogue? Well, really? I had no idea. Yeah, that's, that's congregation ballroom A. Basically, basically, at these Passover programs, people eat like they have two colons. They can't get the food in fast enough. They're always nauseous. They can't believe how much they ate, how much they're going to eat. You have to imagine it's a buffet that's an endless buffet of kosher for Passover food and also food that looks like it shouldn't be kosher for Passover, like, um, like, like, like the hamburger buns and the hot dog buns. And the caterer is always so proud to tell you, yeah, I made that out of, um, out of uh, sawdust, quinoa, and matzo meal. Huh? How's it taste? Yeah. Oh, it tastes just like cat litter. It's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in between the feedings, they have this thing called the tea room, which is something you can never explain to anybody until they've been to one. It's just a room full of meals and food that, and, and Endless, and there's a there's a omelet station. There's a sushi bar. There are candies. Now the candies for Passover are always the same, but the fancier the tea room, the, the, it's the presentation. It's always they have the the chocolate covered almonds, chocolate covered raisins. But the the non fancy one puts it in like a little plastic bowl. Here, eat that and drop dead. The fancy one they put it in this like a, it's like a duck, a glass duck. 
were there and they put all the raisins and the almonds into its tuchus. I'm like, here, here, eat from my tuchus. Here, here, no. The programs always want to show that they're very intellectual. So they bring in a, a scholar in residence, some guy who wrote a book. It's either very like a spiritual type of a, a book, a, a tefillah, prayer, a path to your soul, or some Israeli Zionist militant, you know, um, Israel, a just cause for the Jews. And he's up there lecturing, and it's a call to battle, and it's, it's, it's rallying the troops, and no one in his audience is under the age of 80. But these, like, and they're like, yeah, 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 he talks, he's right. Israel is surrounded by its enemies, yeah. Is the tea room open? Yeah, no, no, dinner's not for a half hour, I'm gonna drop dead. I once had to follow one of these militant guys and, and, and he got everybody all excited and literally in the middle of my show, I dropped the line like, and I was born in Israel and someone screamed out, if Israel needed you to fight in their war, would you go? I said, if Israel's looking for me, they've already lost. Now, I come to these programs as an entertainer, a comedian. I have a good time with the people, we all laugh. But my entertainment secretly is watching people snap. And it always happens. Day three, four, five, someone's at the table with their family. They're sitting there with the, like the, 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 the pizza. There's always a pizza. This pizza was made out of earwax. Yeah, they're sitting there and then they just look at their family member and they're just like, you know, Michael, dad left the buildings for all of us to share. I don't know why you're taking an extra 25% for building management fees. What the hell is that even? Yeah, people just snap. Or sometimes people feel that the, the food itself isn't kosher enough. So the option of picking it up, throwing it at the Latin waitstaff and screaming obscenities, that's an option. Of course, that's what Passover is all about. At the end of the day, I want to tell you all, I miss you. I wish I was with you for Passover. We'll do it next year. I hope you're having fun. I hope you're having laughs in your quarantine. Enjoy yourselves. Enjoy your families. Chag Sameach.